Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. And how are you, Sally? Lovely to be back with you. I have missed you, Harry. Yes, it's a cold and wet day, but um, I'm very happy because it's spring. How beautiful are the flowers, the blossoms, all the beautiful flowers that are out. And I was recently in Queensland and I was chatting to a chick actually in a gym store and she said, I really um, would love to live in Melbourne. And I said, why? It's cold and it's busy. And she said, because you get the beautiful flowers and we don't get them up here. And I forgot about that. It's more English, the style of the, the seasons down here in spring. It's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. So that's opened my eyes as I sort of drive around Melbourne now. Magnolias are divine. Blossoms are pretty, but uh, yeah. Awesome. But you can grow those wonderful grevilleas up in Queensland, yes. which you know, flowers like this nine months of the year. So I don't know that I agree. <laughs> I know. Look, somebody has to work on me to say Melbourne's okay for now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not a life sentence. <laughs> That's exactly right. Do you, do you know, Emma and I, um, 18 months before we escaped, yeah. we walked on the Parkdale Beach and we made the intention. Please show us a way to escape this crowd. <laughs> yeah, I build it in among <laughs> manifestations all the time. It's, it's yeah. like crazy busy. <laughs> but anyway, well, what are we chatting about to, today? So today we're talking about creativity, which is a topic really close to my heart. It certainly is. Yeah, I'm very excited about this topic because you are such a creative person. I've entitled today, Thinking Outside the Box. Yeah, excellent. So my grandfather was a sculptor. My father was an artist, my mother was an artist. So I've got a lot of that in my DNA. Okay. And the power of drawing, the power of the brush, the power of the pen to unlock roadblocks, to, to integrate the brain, mm -hmm. to, heal the sick, to heal the sickness mm -hmm. is profound. Mm. Lots of work done about this. So the, the two people that inspired me um, about this were my father mm -hmm. and a guy called um, Bernie Siegel. So I'll talk about my father's story first. Mm -hmm. he, he was given the kids at school that no one else wanted. Mm. He was given the disruptors. He was given the kids from bad families. He was given the kids who were distractible. Is this a primary school or secondary school? Uh, this was a secondary school. It's mm. college in, in, in Kent in England, in Dover. So teenagers, difficult. Yeah. Mm. And uh, he had an art room and at the top of the hill, at the back of the school, and he would put a big sheet of cartridge paper on everybody's easel, then give them the pens or charcoal or paints they needed, and he'd leave them with that blank piece of paper. Mm. And these kids had difficult pasts. They, they were troubled kids, mostly. And they sat there, basically, in some cases, doing nothing for a whole term. Mm. He let them just stew in it. But the moment they picked up and made a mark on the paper, mm. their life started changing. So that, that, that's just part of my childhood. I know that's possible. What, what Bernie Siegel does, he, he retired now, but he was um, an oncologist, so a cancer surgeon. Yep. Um, very high profile. And he, he managed alongside the knife a spiritual practice. And so he would ask all his clients, all his patients, to draw, to draw their family, draw their life, to draw their illness. Mm. Because in those drawings was the potential to discover why they'd become sick, mm. what their relationship was to their sickness, and how they might resolve that. And so his, you know, I, I had a wonderful session with him on a webinar where talk for an hour as he does he's a great guy to listen to he, i mean his best book is most bestseller is called love medicine and miracles mm. that's an inspiring book um, and he also wrote a book about drawing called the art of healing um, but i ha had a chance to talk to him for 30 minutes because no one else had any questions and we talked about drawing mm. 
and I get all my kids, all my small clients to draw a picture of a house, a tree and a person, which is out of psychology discipline. It's called a projective drawing. And that reveals a lot about how they see themselves, their relationship to those around them, their ability to communicate. What was it, Harry's heart, tree and what? House, a tree and a person. Oh, yeah. house, tree and a person. Yeah, right. Love but Bernie, you know, encouraged me to ask adults to just draw their life mm. because that drawing can reveal so much about what's going on inside their unconscious. Yeah, so all that underlying um, um, hidden emotional sort of reason that sort of manifested into the illness, tapping into that, is that what you're talking about? Or it could be, um, you know, somebody who's um, had a wonderful career and they've just retired. Mm -hmm. So the drawing, you know, shows something nice around their career. And uh, one woman, they did a drawing in it, and then there's this big tap, and it's all flowing down into a pool. She's just got no idea what to do with her life or how to reinvent herself. There's no reason to actually get up in the morning mm. once she's retired because she's defined herself in her work. Mm. Mm. That's a, lot of people a lot of people would be going through that when, and it's a bit like empty nesters when the kids have left home, or you know, as you say, when you retired after 30, 40, 50 years, whatever, in the workforce, and then having that time, that it's like lack of that structure of what they're always doing, you know, it's just a different chapter in the life. Yeah, absolutely makes sense. Yeah, wow. Wow. And, and what do most adults say when I say, you know, draw, paint? What do you think they say? You must be kidding. <laughs> or draw what? What do you want me to draw? I suppose they ask that to me. A lot of them say, I'm not an artist, I can't draw. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but anybody can doodle. Anybody can doodle. Yeah. Just, just... So I say, you could as a child, yeah. just beg into that. Yeah. yeah. Fascinating. So there's, there's lots of research about the power of drawing and it's, it's, used, in, it's, it's used in the health. Yeah, right. In health practitioners for people that are sick a lot. Yeah, I love it. I love it. And particularly with kids, you know, it's really, it's so good for all that. Just just drawing or being creative. I mean, outdoor play for kids, how important is that developing mm. the schools? And we have discussed it before. Where was it? Um, the kindergarten where it's an outdoors climbing trees. It's not in a structured building. Their, their time is out in nature, just exploring and discovering and allowing themselves to be, you know, creative and I mean creativity is something we both love and you are one of the most creative people I've ever met absolutely amazing Thank <laughs> you you know, ways to get into that creativity headspace for me for me I'd like to have that space just to be alone just just turn off from the rest of the world but also have the silence so it doesn't it's it's as long as it's white noise so where were my stats Let's have a look. I mean, for example having a shower is 72 percent of people have creative insights in the shower because for me i was writing down what where what sort of atmosphere do i like to be creative and one of them was having a shower or in the bath you know meditation is a really good way for me to tap into my creativity walking is really awesome and i also like being in the morning when i'm really clear and fresh and focused um lying in bed that's a good one and mind maps do you ever do mind maps i just when i do, do yes mind maps I, I do the most horrific mind maps though <laughs> Just explode out. You start with one little thing, and it goes like you can't get it down quick enough. It's like whoa, whoa, whoa! Love mind maps, and um, <laughs> yeah, because it just <laughs> another thing that helps me with my creativity is trusting my gut. Just being driven by that niggle in my head or that little hunch inside, and it really, really helps me to go. It doesn't matter if it's you know, there's no rules here. You can just think, you're literally thinking outside the box. So, um, yeah, I think that's really important, particularly, oh, I was reading somewhere, you know, for kids, because traditional way of learning was that rote learning and, you know, not being able to think for themselves, but just only being able to think what they're told as opposed to being able to think for themselves. And, um, you know, there's still a lot of rote learning in school, but I think that encouraging it more with the creative thinking, creative writing, um, that sort of thing, which is really good. 
I, I often encourage my clients to draw something abstract and they find that very difficult. Mm, mm. Just to have the courage to follow your hand. Yes, yes. Just that. Yeah. I've done a lot of those work. Sorry, go on. I, I think that, um, you know, getting ideas in the shower and when you're moving and in the morning is because your mind is quieter. Yeah, yeah, it's all about the quietness. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Quiet, yeah, absolutely. I'm in the shower. Uh, for me as well, the warmth. <laughs> it's just like if I'm lying anywhere in the sun or walking in the sun, yeah, I just relax. So the warmth of my muscles helps me relax. And then when I'm relaxed, then I can think, you know, creatively. Otherwise, it's just like when it's cold and I can't, you know, unwind as much. So, yeah, the warmth, I think, really helps. <laughs> That's why I bath as well. Beautiful bath with Epsom salts, a couple of drops of lavender oil, lying there, just, you know, allowing the mind to wander. That's another thing. It's just that aimless wandering of the mind, just seeing where it takes you. I, I can see you moving north, Sally. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine how creative I'd be then. Oh, wow. <laughs> I was like, it was funny, but when I split up, I started writing a diary and all this creativity was coming out of me about 20 years of stuff that was just like flowing out. I'd have it in the car sitting there for pickup. I'd just be writing, writing, writing. I couldn't stop. And it just went on for about a year. It just was allowing everything out. And it was just, I was just going with the flow. It was so weird, but it was so, it was cathartic, but it was also empowering as well. It's like, I didn't even know I had this stuff inside of me. So, yeah, I'm not a creative artist, but, you know, by getting stuff out was really good. <laughs> have, you tried, have you tried writing poetry? Mm, not since school. I think I've got a bit well, too well, I encourage you, try it. Poetry? Okay. Yeah. Write me a poem for next week. <laughs> oh, Harry, okay. I certainly will rise to that challenge. <laughs> Might be based on your crowbar with all the work you've been doing in your garden lately. Um, and look, from a business perspective too, I was looking up some stats here. So 94% of managers that are hiring people say creativity is an important aspect in the candidate and creative, creative problem solving is the second most difficult skill to find among their job applicants. So they struggle to find it, but it's one of the most important things. And what did the World Economic Forum says? Creativity is related to nine of the top 10 skills that global execs say is essential for 2020 and beyond. So it's mm. really important in business to start being creative. You know, it's mm. like really bring it in as a skill within business. So, oh, another fact that I found, which you touched on before, but trauma often stimulates the creativity and from post-traumatic yeah post-traumatic growth it shifts your way of thinking about things so um a lot of the great artists and, and you know very famous people because of trauma that they had in their life allowed them to stop and reflect and look at the way things are going or think differently and and hence became quite famous a lot of musicians for example like Beatles, Led Zeppelin experimented in different ways of producing music. I mean, music mm. is another very creative field. Mm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So in, in um, children, mostly, creativity can build fine motor. This is, you know, on paper. Um, it, it can nurture curiosity and imagination because, you, you know, you can just explore. Yep. Um, it improves problem solving and increases risk thresholds, which is a big thing in the clients I see. Yeah. So they, they, can, they can try and take risks on the paper and that then trans when they see that works, that they can transpose that into their real life. Love that. Love that. Um, it calms and de-stresses. So we move into the adult um, realm. You know, a lot of, as you say, a lot of the artists have found creativity because that has allowed them to get over what difficulty they've experienced in life. So it, it can diminish, it can calm and de-stress, it can diminish trauma. Yep. So our therapies, you know, widely used for focusing on clients with trauma. Um, and it, just viewing art, there's an interesting 
research by a guy called Professor Semir Zeki, a neurologist in London. He, he's done a lot of brain mapping. And he's looked at um, what happens to people's brains when they look at art and what happens is the frontal cortex lights up and releases dopamine, which mm. makes you feel good. Yep. So a bit like you can have the same experience as you do when you fall in love by looking at a beautiful piece of art. Mm. Mm. So it can lift your mood dramatically. Um, and... You know, I think you're right. The first step is to find a, a quiet place or find, find a maker space mm -hmm. and then pick, pick up whatever you're going to use and trust your hand. Yeah. And so trusting, you know, what's inside, your intuition will lead you. And then follow the flow. Yeah. And then you can find your magic. Yeah. But you have to trust. You have to trust. That's right. Take that. That's that risk taking again. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. Just, just you and you'd be there? amazed where it can take you. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Look at us. <laughs> we took exactly. a risk. <laughs> yeah. So glad I found you. <laughs> that's right. My goodness. <laughs> oh man, sex is another creative outlet. Mm, I think that's more a primal outlet. <laughs> Quite creative. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> we'll do an R-rated show on that one. <laughs> <laughs> you got me thinking after we're talking crowbars. <laughs> oh yeah, sure, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> we remember Peter Sellers when he talked about his curry at school. We used to go upstairs to the dormitory and prize them apart with a crowbar. <laughs> remember that? Right. <laughs> oh, but you know what? It takes courage to be creative as well. In, in a little way of like taking that risk and it was really funny because when we picked the topic creativity i just seen a, a post on Instagram about creativity takes courage and it does because it's, it's daring to be different a little bit or so doing things differently. Yeah because because you have to be vulnerable and I'm reading this book at the moment as you know um, Brené Brown. Yes, Brené Brown yep. About vulnerability <laughs> and yeah I mean if you do something creative you you expose you know, you expose yourself and you're vulnerable. People may not like it and you may get hurt. Suck it up, princess. Absolutely, because nothing changes if nothing changes. Mm. <laughs> That's one of my sayings, absolutely. Mm. Have you done a model today, Harry? Um, not a little bit. Find a quiet place, trust your hand, follow the flow. It's not in palette. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've done one in palette, but... Um... Oh, very good. I look forward to it. <laughs> go um so first of all it was the space just find the space to be alone to because it provides that constructive internal reflection it generates yeah. ideas and then get that silence you know that quiet thinking time less sort of outside noise just so that you can just sort of focus and then so yes that's what you get when you've got that space and the silence then you can focus and see things more clearly or open your eyes to different ways and and approaching things when you've got that silence and then you can also sense sense new opportunities new experiences discover different ways of doing things sort of thinking outside the box allowing your senses and so when you've got that sense of new opportunities got that silence then you can feel you can really feel emotionally different it, well you can feel emotionally different but and see things differently feel things differently and then finally, when you've got the space and you're sensing new opportunities and experiences, you can form new ways of thinking and approaching things. So like taking that risk more often or trusting yourself more often. And overall, when you've got the space to silence and you're sensing more, you're just overall more creative. Do you like that one? Awesome. <laughs> Focus, I will, use, I will use your model this time. <laughs> Um, I, you know, I can add something to that. When you've got the space and the silence, I think what that gives you is clarity. Clarity, yes. Or, or because I already, I was doing it in palette form. I know. And then when you sense and you've got the space, another word you could think of for that in, intersection is you, it allows you to innovate. Innovate, yes, yes, I like that. But it's not in palette. I'm not in palette today. Oh, no, I had the source out. I was just like, we, we could do inspire, intuition and innovate. <laughs> oh, I love that because intuition is just so important. That's that, that trusting, trusting your gut, mm. trusting the, 
the internal GPS, if you like. It's like mm. really important. Mm. Innovate, inspire, and intuition. Love it. So my steps were just literally that one: find some space yeah. to be alone, get that time for reflection, get that silence to focus, get that clarity, not be distracted, and have time to turn it off. And then sensing out those new opportunities, and you know, going mm. along with your intuition and your inspiration and innovation and all that sort of stuff. I think it's such an important thing. And as you know, the, even the business stats now showing that in business they're, they're really encouraging people and leaders to be just tap into their creativity think of mm. new ways and opportunities of doing things differently mm. or creating new things absolutely you know? good good well that's <laughs> an awesome topic loved it sally yeah loved it loved it loved it well you know, as i said you were such a creative person i mean look at the things that you've done in your life so creative all your sculptures you. and you know yeah. married a creative lady so you're surrounded yeah. by it and you were brought up with it it's just so yeah. beautiful yeah. Oh, I will get on that poem, Harry. <laughs> Good, I look forward to it. Awesome. I'll try and do one too. Okay, that's our homework. <laughs> yeah, that'll be fun. That will actually. be fun. Yeah. Really cool. All right, so I look forward to um, next week. We're doing peace, you see. Yes, yeah, something that's another awesome topic that I really okay. am to. Look forward to that. So okay. I've down Ode to Harry. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. <laughs> All right, beautiful. I'll see you next week. Okay. See, see you. Bye.